unloaded quality factor of transverse electric NML mode in cylindrical cavity. As we have done before for the rectangular cavity, we are going to calculate the unloaded quality factor for cylindrical cavity. And as we said, the quality factor is calculated by calculating the stored energy and the dissipated energy. And actually, the quality factor is given by uh, 2 multiplied by omega multiplied by the stored energy over the dissipated power. We have two types of dissipating power. Uh, we have conductor loss and we have dielectric loss. So we have quality factor due to conductor loss and quality factor due to the dielectric loss. At the beginning, we need to calculate the stored energy. Then we calculate the dissipated power either to conductor or dielectric loss and from the stored energy and dissipated power we calculate the quality. To do this, we need at the beginning to know uh, what is the fields inside uh, the resonator. So assuming that we are talking about transverse electric NM mode in cylindrical uh, waveguide, so cylindrical waveguide and transverse electric mode, we have HZ, the longitudinal component is HZ, which is proportional to the first or the basal function of first kind, JN. And the transverse components are E rho, E phi, H rho, and H phi. And because we are talking about the cavity, the fields inside the cavity should satisfy the condition that the total transverse field, the total transverse electric field on the lower uh, face of the cavity should be zero and on the upper face should be zero. This will satisfy that the fields of E rho and E phi should be sine L by Z over D, sin L by Z over D. And from this, we can obtain the Z dependence of other field components. So, the field components of a TE NML mode in cylindrical cavity is given by these equations for HZ, H rho, H phi, T e rho, and E4. And because it is transverse electric, EZ equals zero. Uh, it should be noted here that everything is made in terms of the magnitude of HZ, which is going to be H0. So HZ has a magnitude H0 multiplied by basal function of first kind JN of argument B dash NM multiplied by rho over A. This is the rho dependence of HZ. Multiplied by cosine N phi. This is the dependence of Y. Multiplied by sine L by Z over T. From this HZ, we can calculate H rho as beta A multiplied by the magnitude H0 over B dash NM multiplied by J dash N. J dash here is the first derivative of the basic function of first kind of order N of B dash NM rho over A. This is the rho dependence of H rho cosine N phi cosine L by Z over T. H phi is given by minus beta a squared n h naught over b dash n m squared over rho multiplied by g n b dash n m rho over a sine n phi cosine l y z over b. 
e rho is given by j k k here is the wave number of the material inside the cavity which is given by omega square root mu epsilon eta eta is the intrinsic impedance of the medium inside the cavity which is the square root mu over epsilon a squared n h naught over b dash n m squared over rho multiplied by this function of order n b dash n m rho over a multiplied by sin n phi sin l by z over finally e phi is j k eta a h naught over b dash n m multiplied by j dash n b dash n m rho over a cosine n phi sin l by z over effectively all these terms we have discussed before in the case of circular waveguide uh, circular waveguide so if you are missing something just return to chapter 3 in the part of circular waveguides now to calculate the quality factor as i mentioned at the beginning we have to calculate the stored energy and as a resonance the stored electric energy equals the stored magnetic energy so we can calculate either the stored electric energy or the stored magnetic energy okay uh, the stored electric energy is epsilon over 4 the integration over the volume the magnitude of e squared dv so the total stored energy equal twice the stored electric energy because as we mentioned uh, stored electric energy equals the stored magnetic energy so if we are going to multiply here by 2 so this would be epsilon over 2 the magnitude of the electric field we have here only e rho and e phi so the magnitude of the electric field squared is e rho squared plus e phi squared as we mentioned in the previous slide this is e rho and this is e phi so we are going to take the magnitude of e rho squared and the magnitude of e phi squared and we are going to integrate it with respect rho d rho d phi dz which is the volume of this circular thread the value of rho is going from 0 to a the value of phi is from 0 to 2 pi and the value of z from 0 to d effectively the integration with respect to z is very simple sine squared z or sine squared l by z over d its integration with respect to z is d over 2 the integration of with respect to phi sine squared n phi from 0 to 2 pi it is actually uh, 1 over 2 the remaining part is only the integration of the Wiesel function and the first derivative of the Wiesel function so this actually the main terms should be taken into consideration in the integration okay uh, so here we have done the integration with respect to z and multiplied by d over 2 so is this d over 4 and the integration over phi is sine squared is 1 over 2 multiplied by 2y so it is y so we have here we have here this part okay and we have here a to the power 4 or a to the power 2 eta squared k squared epsilon uh, h not squared b dash squared so we have here only b dash not squared so we have b dash squared inside here in some case in a row or in a phi uh, 
the jelly meaning bar could be this bar due to the base function and the integration of this function can be obtained from the tables of integration and it can be obtained in closed form as 1 minus n over b dash n n squared multiplied by basal function of order n squared of b dash n n okay this is the stored electric energy or the stored energy the total stored energy inside the cavity at the resonance which is twice the stored electric energy on the other hand the conductor loss in the cylindrical cavity it can be obtained as b conductor loss or power losses due to conductor loss is the surface resistance over 2 multiplied by the integration over the total surface of the closed surface of the cavity of h tangential squared ds actually here we have three surfaces uh, this planar surface and this planar surface at z equal 0 and z equal d in this case uh, the value of h rho and h of i are tangential on the other hand this curved surface which corresponds to rho equals a which is the curved surface of the cylinder in this curved surface we have h phi and h z are the tangential components so we have three faces or three surfaces these two surfaces z equals 0 and z equals d are the same so we can calculate it once and multiply it by 2 so 2 the integration over the surface rho d rho d phi of h rho at z equals 0 squared plus h phi of z equals 0 at z equals 0 squared h rho and h phi are given by these equations the only thing is that we are going to apply z equals 0 so this cosine it would be unity the remaining part is the integration with respect to rho so these are function of rho and function of phi the limits of integration would be from rho equals 0 to a and from phi equals 0 to 2 pi and as I mentioned this surface has a losses like this surface so we are going to calculate on this surface only and then multiply by two. the remaining surface is a curved surface which can be represented as rho equals a multiplied by d phi so a d phi dz this is the outer curved surface of the cylinder as the outer curved surface of the cylinder, the tangential component is h phi and h z. And it should be noted that the value of rho in both cases is a. So here the integration of a d phi dz, where phi from 0 to 2 pi and z from 0 to d. h phi when rho equals a, so we are going to apply rho equals a here this is j n b n m dash and h is it at rho equals a so we are going to replace rho by a this would be j n b n m dash and the function is actually function of y cosine n phi and here is sine n phi and the function of z is sine l by z over d sine cosine l z by over d. Now by developing these two integrations, we can determine the conductor loss in a final form in this form. And as I mentioned, 
you could use uh, integration tables or integral tables to find out this closed form of integrations. So this is a power losses due to the conductor loss. Now we have calculated uh, the stored energy and we have calculated the conductor loss. So we can calculate the unloaded quality factor due to the conductor loss for the transverse electric NML mode in cylindrical by This actually is the stored energy which we have already calculated and this is uh, the conductor loss and here the quality factor is omega naught W or in other words 2 omega naught WE it doesn't matter it is the same so omega naught W over B conductor loss so we are going to multiply this by omega naught and divide by this so we can obtain the complete form for the quality factor for the conductor loss for the transverse electric NML mode in cylindrical cavity region. Alright, actually, this quite complicated uh, function, but I'm sure it is easy to be driven. Okay. All right. Uh, as a chart for the quality factor as a function of the diameter to uh, the length of the cavity, we can note that uh, the quality factor of the lowest modes, which is TE111 mode or TM010 mode, is not the highest quality factor. Actually, as we are going to increase the mood, we are going to increase uh, the quality factor of the dielectric or of uh, the, the cylindrical uh, region. So we can note that the higher order modes has better, or, or, the, or the higher order modes uh, have better or has higher uh, quality factor or conductor loss quality factor okay on the other hand the dielectric quality factor QD it can be obtained as the dissipated power due to the dielectric loss which is given by of the integration over the volume J dot E conjugate EV and we said before that J it can be obtained as omega epsilon dash multiplied by E. So where epsilon, uh, epsilon double dash is uh, the imaginary part of uh, the dielectric constant of the complex dielectric constant. Uh, and from this we can say that it is omega epsilon double dash over 2 multiplied by uh, the modulus of E squared. The modulus of E squared is actually A O squared plus E phi squared. And by taking the functions of E O squared and E phi squared and taking the volume is rho d rho d phi dz and the limits of integration rho from 0 to A, phi from 0 to 2 pi and z from 0 to d, we can obtain the dissipated power. Actually, uh, the term related to the integration with rho would be including uh, Bessel function and the derivative of Bessel function in this form, which can be uh, obtained by using uh, integration tables uh, in closed form. So in this case, we can obtain the dissipated power due to the dielectric loss as a closed form in this form. Uh, we have already calculated the stored energy. So, from the stored energy and the dielectric loss, we can calculate the quality factor due to the dielectric loss as omega multiplied by the total stored energy over the dissipated power Vt. So, 
we are going to multiply this by omega and divide it by bd we find that the result is simply epsilon over epsilon double dash which is 1 over 10 delta once again for any closed cavity uh, the quality factor due to the dielectric loss is simply 1 over the loss tangent of the medium which is filling uh, this uh, cavity reservoir. This is actually the same result for uh, the rectangular waveguide uh, resonator or rectangular waveguide cavity which we have already discussed before. By this end, we have uh, completed uh, the analysis of uh, cylindrical uh, cavity resonator. In the next video, we are going to present an example about cylindrical cavity resonator.